What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Nightmare on Elm Street. We'll be talking about Scream 3. We'll be talking about The Exorcist Believer and we'll be talking about Saw X. So just to start off with Nightmare on Elm Street. I did a video, a couple of videos, a week or two ago telling you the status regarding the rights to A Nightmare on Elm Street. Mostly a rumor and sharing rumors that I had heard and then other people bigger than me more credible to me like big screen leaks and other creators out there who have been doing this a lot longer than me like jimmy champagne shout out to you started chiming in and sharing their thoughts on this whole matter because it all started with a tweet from the v scooper who was alleging that blumhouse was working on a legacy sequel to the original film but what came out from big screen leaks was that blumhouse does not have those rights and we at least did get, did get confirmation of that bidding war that was rumored earlier this year as well. Uh, but Big Screen Leaks also followed up in another recent tweet from the V Scooper who was clarifying their tweet about the legacy sequel Blumhouse was allegedly working on. They said that it's not a collab in the works. The rights will belong to one studio and one only. Blumhouse isn't close to finalizing details either. The only studio it's remotely attached to is New Line Cinema. Last I heard, either New Line Cinema renewed their deal, although that's not 100%, or the Cravens still have them. Now, here's my response to, to Big Screen Leaks' tweet to the V-Scooper. I think most people who grew up with that classic New Line logo would not mind new line regaining their rights and i know people who hate blumhouse's treatment of these classic ips are relieved that jason blum seemingly isn't close to having his hands on this property nightmare on elm street is undoubtedly going to return sooner rather than later i hope and to be honest perhaps they should take up robert england's suggested idea from earlier this year of doing a modern dream warriors type of film with a new cast of characters though or with a new set of characters though but we'll see what happens with this franchise sooner rather than later scream 3 apparently well not even apparently uh, viewer non has given us <laughs> evidence already Scr uh, a 1999 assembly cut of scream 3 seems to be in viewer non's possession but what does this or why does this even matter keep in mind viewer non revealed some fun images not too long ago of roman setting up his voice changer so getting to see this moment could be quite cool because it, it would appear it's a part of this assembly cut that viewer non now has their hands on um I'm certain Viewer Non will tweet out the differences in this cut versus the one we got because the assembly cut, according to them, is 140 minutes. They have actually shared a few clips of the opening and the Roman reveal on their Twitter. If you want to go over to Viewer Non's Twitter and look at these clips of Scream 3's assembly cut, Cotton has to answer a question about Carrie. Uh, asking like the killer still using the woman's voice and saying something about name name the movie with the car killer or the killer car and then he's like oh carrie and then roman has some lines about faking his age to get away with the spree which doesn't sound like it makes too much sense without seeing the full assembly cut but i guess viranon might actually upload it if they if they of course have no rights or have no legal issues with this because with them sharing this clips i don't know the ins and outs of all the legalities that they're doing if they're doing it then they're just doing it but i i hope they don't get into any trouble if they decide to upload the entire assembly cut i know a lot of us would love to see the assembly cut of screen three but whatever if they can somehow in this assembly cut also have a second killer included that roman disposed of midway through the movie i'll bump up screen three several points just from knowing we had two killers and not a one-man wrecking crew the voice changer, given the year it's set in, is still unrealistic despite being ahead of its time. But the moment with Roman uploading files and downloading voices, downloading voices could provide some nice context on how exactly this device was created. Now, diving into the Exodus Believer, we got this new image of Catherine from the Exodus Believer acting in full during church, as we see in the trailer as well. This is from the Total Film Magazine issue that's coming out. Who They also had some new interesting comments from David Gordon Green discussing Chris's return or discussing, um, I should say, what is what is her name? Ellen Burstyn's return. They said I he said David Gordon Green. I read her biography and then it became like a mission. Could I invite one of Hollywood, one of the Hollywood icons to step into this role that she hasn't been in in 50 years? That's 
a true undertaking. The inspiration that her book gave to me in terms of her perspective about the movie and how the success of the movie, I say success, but also a lot of obstacles and hardships were faced because of the notoriety of the film. So I got to know her and we swapped literature and ideas and we evolved this character to be meaningful for Ellen beyond just a Chris McNeil revisit. So I like that. I like that Ellen was, of course, included in the process and her thoughts were taken into consideration when it came to how they were portraying Chris. However, again, I have to say this, despite Ellen being OK with it, there's a lot of people who have already seen it, who have already told me how they are using her. And just because Ellen is OK with it and just because the writers are OK with it doesn't mean that you guys are going to end up being OK with it. There are a lot of things that she is doing that do not make her seem like an expert. They do not make her seem like she is the same person we were with. Not and I get, I get that she can change over time, but it just seems like what she went through 50 years ago. It hasn't helped her smarten up in any way. You'll see what I mean when you see the movie and <laughs> what happens to her. It has nothing to do with her living or dying. I will say that. Jumping into the last topic here. Saw X. Now the Hollywood handle this Twitter page is tweeting out that apparently Saw X is an hour and 58 minutes. I could have sworn that Saw Space, who was the reliable person who was telling us when the Saw X trailer was dropping, one of those other reliable people over from the Saw subreddit who already has a lot of knowledge on what is happening with Saw X, uh, like like another user over on the Saw Reddit page, Vink360, they were claiming it's an, it's an hour and 48 minutes, so like the same time as Saw 3, but of course, that doesn't make sense either since people were saying it's the longest entry in the franchise coming out of the Scream Midsummer Scream panel before we got the trailer online that weekend. So if it's actually an hour and 58 minutes, that would justify the claims from the panel of it being the longest entry. But of course, maybe Saw Space was referring to a different cut at the time because the Hollywood handle over on their Twitter is reporting that it's an hour and 58 minutes. So who is telling the truth? Because in order for it to be the longest, like we heard coming out of Midsummer Scream, maybe there's they're referring to the cut that Kevin has before it was trimmed down because Saw Space is saying it's only an hour and 48 minutes. We'll just have to wait and see who is telling the truth because it can't be the longest if it's just the same runtime as Saw 3. If it, it's if it's longer by two or three minutes, it's officially the longest. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and image the video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.